2023 was full of mathematical joy and discovery. In March, a newly found shape named HAT solved a long-lasting problem of finding an aperiodic monotile, a so-called Einstein. An upper bound for the Ramsey number, a key concept in graph theory, was greatly improved. Also, very recently, Terence Tao and his team proved a famous conjecture in additive combinatorics, and then proceeded to formalize it in a theorem-proving programming language called Lean. 2023 was amazing for the math research world. So now we gotta celebrate the upcoming 2024 with our own small mathematical research. I even prepared a cool topic for that occasion that is related to pyramids. Wait, pyramids? What pyramids have to do with 2024? This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Let us start with a triangle made out of balls, which is exactly 22 of them on the side. I know it sounds very random, but trust me, we'll get to the point. Now, this triangle will be a base for the earlier mentioned pyramid. We are building it from the ground up, so the next layer will be a triangle with exactly 21 balls on the side. Next, we'll have a 20 ball triangle, 19 ball triangle, up to a 1 ball triangle, which will be the top of our pyramid. Okay, cool, we have a pyramid. What now? The question I would like us to ponder on is how many balls did we use in its construction? We can of course count them and after a long time alone spent with gallons of coffee, we could conclude that there are exactly 2024 balls in our pyramid. Fun, right? Our calculations proved that 2024 is a tetrahedral number. It means that it is a number of balls used in a construction of a tetrahedral of some size, in this case with side length 22. But how do we explain it without counting per se? Or what other numbers are tetrahedral? These are the questions I would like to tackle in this video, but it would be great if you would try answering them for yourself. It's a lot of fun, believe me. Now. My solution. Let's go. Let us get back to the construction of the magical 2024 pyramid. We started with a triangle that was the base for the whole pyramid and its side consisted of 22 balls. Then we added another layer with a triangle with 21 balls on the side and so on. Therefore, the number of balls in the whole pyramid is equal to the sum of numbers of balls in all layers. Each of the layers was a triangle with side length equal to k, where k runs from 21 to 1. Let us denote the number of balls in such triangle with tk. Then, our pyramid has exactly this many balls. Are we done yet? No. We want an explicit formula which doesn't involve any mysterious notations like this TK or any summation. How can we get rid of those? Let me show you. Let us start from the inside out, by calculating what is the value of TK. Recall that TK, which is the cave triangular number, was defined as the number of balls in a triangle with side length k. By going layer by layer, we can see that tk is simply equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus k. This is simply a sum of the first k natural numbers, a very famous sum with many various ways of calculating it. I'll show you one that might not be the easiest, but it will help us later in the video. Let us rewrite the sum and start calculating. The first step will be changing this i to a second sum, going from 1 to i over 1. We did it because now we want to interchange the order of summation. There is a slight problem though, the second sum is dependent on the index from the first sum. 
Therefore, we need a drawing. These dots represent the pairs i, j that our double sum goes through. To switch the order, we need to reflect this graph over the i equals j line. It is now easy to see that our double sum is equal to this double sum. After some simple calculations, splitting the sum into three sums, we arrive at this equality, which then implies the formula for the TK. Now let us get back to the tetrahedral numbers, which will denote with TEN. We are going to use the same switching the sums trick as in the case of triangular numbers. As you could have noticed, the trick didn't depend on what we were summing, only on the intervals we were summing over. So we can use the same double sum equality without repeating the whole drawing process. Now notice that this i does not depend on the index from the second sum. Therefore, the second sum is equal to i times the number of indexes, which is n minus i plus 1. Now we split the sum into 3, add 1 to the i squared one, so that we get the tetrahedral numbers, and here you go, the formula emerges. Let me only plug in 22 and voila! 2024. And how did you solve the tetrahedral numbers problem? Let me know in the comments and meanwhile let me wish you Happy New Year. Let 2024 be filled with many great mathematical discoveries. See ya! The trick with switching sums has proved to be useful in our tetrahedral problem and I'm sure it will help you with calculating different sums in the future. It's yet another tool in your mathematical toolbar. If you want to expand your toolbar even further with more and less common mathematical tricks, check out the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website that contains a lot of lessons on mathematics, among which you'll find the basics, but also more advanced stuff. Their lessons are unique as they engage you with their interactive exercises and many examples. Here's a course on sequences and series, in which you'll get to know yet another trick that will allow you to find a formula for triangular numbers. If you want to check them out, you can visit brilliant.org slash maffinity, where you will get a free premium subscription to Brilliant for 30 days. Brilliant is also offering a 20% discount for the annual premium subscription for the 200 first subscribers, which will sign up through brilliant.org slash maffinity. I'll also put that link in the description. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching.